Oh yeah, this is about positioning, so um, it's important in terms of autonomous driving, for example. So I see we have a car and at satellites for some signals, we have new radio cells, that are the pink ones, and the blue ones are uh, the, uh, the LG network ones here. So, and, um, then, for instance, the pink one is 5G and the blue ones are uh, like LTE. LTG, yeah, 4G, yeah, mm. exactly. And so we have two different... And the yellow one is uh, the satellite. satellite All right. exactly. So, and um, we have... Um, there is the non-standalone and the standalone motors. And the non-standalone is with 5G cells and the LTE network. And with both you can find out the position of the car. Um, and this is what happens at the moment because um, you just put the 5G cells and on top, I know, you can say different, you're using the existing network, the LTE network and the 5G cells to find out the position at. And the goal is they stand alone, so you're just using the 5G cells to uh, find out the position because 5G makes it easy, or 5G um, helps you to a bit more precisely. So, um, the car, you can find out the position more precisely, so got it, higher got accuracy. It. Exactly. That's sort of the, like the value proposition that 5G is delivering. Exactly. All right. Uh, well, so um, what we're doing is to um, simulate the signals mm -hmm. um, with so like this. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, and um, with that you uh, simulate the different signals, mm -hmm. so 5G. Um, like 4G and and satellites and um, we use that to test the yeah, we can see the quality of the signal so how good your car can connect with um, the different devices station. Uh, yeah, yeah, basic exactly. stations all right um, downlink and uplink connections yeah yeah exactly and there are you know different um, different ways to do that and um, for example it's a, this system supports the MR1 so it means um, quickest to range one so up to six gigahertz and also quickest to two which is up to 28 gigahertz <laughs> um, yeah so um, this is what we do so we, we simulate the signals and um, to, to test Oh, well, the accuracy of it. Perfect. Uh, which means instead of like a dry tester, then I can get your sort of like a, your gear and then put in, you know, like a, in a production network and get all these measurements? Exactly. Uh, so uh, if you want to ensure that you have a certain standard, that you need quality uh, um, of services. Yeah, exactly. Um, so um, then you use our systems or so, like this one, sorry, like uh, this one there, and mm. uh, you can test it. And, then you can ensure that your device um, is like good enough. So you can also do it with your mobile phone or something. Yeah. Um, Perfect. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Feeling done. Yeah. Uh, can I scan you? Yes, yes, for sure. Well, today I'm going to talk about mobility, especially 5G. Why 5G is so important? 5G brings to the table different technologies. 5G is not only about the handsets, uh, it's not about the enhancements that nowadays the devices are going to be able to perform. Uh, also, 5G is about a lot of infrastructure, a chain of uh, way to do business. A lot of use cases in 5G are focused on the enterprise. Why the enterprise? Because the enterprise needs that velocity and that latency that 5G comes to offer. There are two different planes that we need to take into account, control plane and user plane. And in control plane, we handle all the protocols. In user plane, we handle the context of the call itself. It could be data or it could be a voice. Why 5G is so relevant? Because it brings to the table technologies such as network function virtualized infrastructure, NFBIs technologies, also it brings to the table the BNF way to do network elements. What does BNF stands for? BNF stands for a Virtual Network Function, 
which means uh, we can virtualize any functionality in a virtualized network. It could be a DHCP server, it could be a policy server, it could be a packet gateway, a service gateway, it could be any network element that we can imagine. And when we are talking about DNS, we are talking about the portability of the functionality in a virtualized network. Therefore, that's the relevance of the 5G conversation because any corporation or any service provider or any enterprise, they are not gonna be attached or locked to just a single vendor. They can replace or they can have this mobility and portability of these BNFs and put that, those BNFs in a different infrastructure and put those BNFs in a different NFBO, in a different orchestrator. I'm gonna talk about what is an orchestrator later, maybe in another video, but basically an orchestrator does is automate but at the same time orchestrate different services. Different services that could be related or not related, but the intention of this orchestration is to really own on the services itself and not uh, really own on the accuracy of the information that is put in place based on any manual task or any manual process. Therefore, whenever we have orchestration, we are gonna be able to have a service assurance because we can assure any services that was previously provisioned. Also, whenever we do orchestration in an NFBI network, we are able to do service chaining. What does service chaining mean? It means that when we have a service that is connected with a different service, this service is the outcome. These other services need this input, then we can concatenate these two services and build a service chaining. Therefore, we are gonna have an end outcome coming from all these two services. That's really important, and that's one of the capabilities that we can have in place in a 5G network through an NFBO or an orchestrator of NFBs. That's another example of why 5G is important. 5G is important also because we are gonna have tons or millions of devices, IoT devices that can affect the behavior of our current networks. Therefore, 5G is gonna do that sort of convergence and it's gonna enable the current infrastructure to be able to interact with different other use cases coming from the public sector like smart cities or coming from the enterprise like companies, other different use cases that we may imagine. It looks like uh, nowadays all these sort of different verticals are gonna be able to converge in a 5G network. Therefore, that's really important for any vendor, that's really important for any country, that's really important for any company because 5G is not only about the new use cases that we are going to be able to explore like gaming and more interactive gaming with better user experience but also we are going to be able to see virtual reality use cases we are going to be able to see a real-time data use cases whenever for instance any action can be perform it in a real time. Therefore, the conversation around 5G is not isolated just for the handset. It has a broad, broad spectrum. That's why we need to put a lot of focus how companies and also the countries looking at these use cases and also what are sort of like the, the plans that they have in order to embed this 5G infrastructure in the new way to manage the governance of companies or public sector, even government, even countries. That's why 5G conversation is not isolated to the vendors. It's a really broad spectrum conversation that needs to be in the core of companies, uh, vendors, public sector, countries, and citizens as well. Well, my name is Mario Meraz, and I hope you enjoyed this conversation, this video about 5G. I didn't speak about the big data in the 5G topic as well, but that's another big topic that is gonna fit all our different new processor, all the different capabilities or different, even different opportunities to take advantage about all this data that is gonna be coming from different devices, coming from IoT devices, coming from smart cities, coming from the handset mobiles. I didn't speak about big data, but big data is another big, big topic that is gonna add a lot of value to the 5G conversation. Plus, another topic that I didn't speak was the cybersecurity aspects that are gonna be in place whenever we have a 5G network in place in any SP, in any service provider, or in any public sector, or even enterprise companies. The cybersecurity aspect of 5G is also 
another separate topic because it's so broad. There are a lot of things that we need to discuss about the new possibilities to be attacked or to have a lot of vulnerabilities. Therefore, 5G needs to be in the core conversation of any sort of corporations, talking about public sector, talking about enterprise, talking about service providers. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. My name is Mario Meraz. Hello, hello. I'm gonna talk about now about 5G and why 5G is a service-based architecture. We can see all the network elements in a 5G network. A couple of features and principles that 5G brings to the table is modularity, reusability, self-containment, and network functions. This is the main architecture and it's based on BNFs. Through these BNFs, we can do service assurance, we can do automation, we can do scalability. This is the service-based principle. It normally talks about the different functionalities like a data storage functions, also AMF, rebinding with another AMF. We can see in this picture a better service level architecture. End to end, we can see the network elements like a UPF, AMF, and SMF that are gonna be more on the run side of the network. And also we can see different slices. When we are gonna separate these slices, network slices, whenever we can handle different quality of services or we need to manage different customers or different service level agreements. Therefore, we are gonna have this network slicing approach. Again, these are the concepts of uh, NFBO, network function orchestration. We need to collect telemetry through different measurements in order to do analytics. And these are a couple of elements that we are gonna be able to interact like a sun, for instance, self-optimization network. We are gonna be able to collect all these information from the different 5G core networks. The standalone definition of a 5G network is based on ENDC, dual connectivity, and also the EU TRAN PDC during the initial attach to the network. A EU TRAN PDC is created to use the SRB1 and in the NR PDCP. Once the connectivity is established, the NR PDCP can be used either for SRB1 and also SRB2, which is called the RC connection, the configuration process. This is the definition of network slicing. As we mentioned before, we can separate different service level agreements, different quality of services for different customers. As we can see in this slide, the same radio interface could be providing different network slicing because now the run is based on microservices. A couple of standards, a couple of documents that you guys can take a look. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. It's a short presentation, but um, I hope this is useful for you in order to have a better idea how the architecture of a 5G network is service-based. My name is Mario Meraz. Thanks a lot.